Hello everyone, um, this is the first ever vlog of Structural Madness. Um, it's my first time so uh, just showing you a basic experiment of crosswind oscillations for flexible structures and how wind impacts tall buildings as compared to short buildings essentially. So what I have done over here is I have built up a bunch of single degree of freedom oscillators, inverted pendulums in a way. As you can see, um, they are varying in heights. They all have different stiffnesses because of their heights and also the type of stick that I have used. Mm. All the balls, red and blue, have the exact same mass. This one is particularly a very light ball, but it's bigger in size just to increase the surface area for the wind to interact on the ball. Now you can see that the sticks are different, are of different stiffnesses because of their cross section as well. Like this is a very skinny 3 16th inch diameter stick as compared to a quarter inch diameter stick. And there is a square stick as well, which is comparatively very stiff as compared to other sticks. All the oscillators are placed in front of a tower fan, the direction of which is exactly in line with all the oscillators. So what will happen is, as soon as I start the wind, you'll see that these pendulums will start oscillating, they'll start responding to the wind flow. Um, so let's go ahead and turn on the fan first. You see that? The most flexible structure started responding first. Now let's take a look at the entire picture. Kind of surprising, right? Like the most flexible structure is oscillating, stop and oscillating again. The stiffer structures are not moving that much. Let's take, let's focus on this guy, for example. From the top, you can see that it's not just going back and forth. At times it's going in diagonal directions, something like that as well. The direction of wind is coming from here. So wind is coming straight, acting on the surface, but the ball is doing something different. So you can see the response of the ball. It stops for a second and then again starts shaking violently. What happens is, as wind comes from this face, it passes around the ball on both sides. Let me stop this fan for a sec to get that stability. And all right, you stop right there. As the wind comes in, it gets separated on either side of the wall face, passes around it, but along with that, it creates small vortices, small tornadoes around around next to on on the either side of the wall faces. Now these tornadoes they don't occur generally at the same time. Once it will occur on this side. So what will happen is there will be a suction created on this face of the ball. Because of that suction, it will go that way. But remember that the wind is also pushing the ball this way. So ball starts doing something like this or goes diagonally, as we saw that. But that only happens in a very flexible structure because generally, the tornadoes are so small that there need to be multiple number of tornadoes occurring on the same phase at once and also their force magnitude is very small. So once I turn it on again, um, the flexible structure can perform a lot under a very small amount of force as compared to a stiffer structure. So these are our stiffer buildings in our condition.
under that small value of force it cannot oscillate that significantly because it is stiffer so it's like if you press iron it's not going to deform but if, if I press this wood stick it's going to deform a lot even for a small value of force see that violent shaking so that's what wind does to flexible structures that's why the taller the structure gets the more flexible it is and the more hazardous the wind response is it's very uncomfortable to live in a taller building what do people do in such conditions people generally provide dampers at the top of the building what this damper do is it provides additional damping to the structure so it kind of opposes the oscillation of the building itself it is passive damping so it, it always helps structures to resist the wind vibrations here I have drawn something very interesting and very basic an earthquake response spectrum against a wind spectrum so generally the stiffer the structure the more is the seismic response from that structure why because you know in generally ground shakes very violently at a very low very high frequency or very low periods and generally stiffer structures are just within that range to generate that significant amount of response as well and that's just something natural property of the building as well like a seismic force is an inertial force so we literally aren't doing anything it's just the ground moving and that's how the building is responding so let's see here this is the period of the structure it's increasing in this direction as the structure gets more and more flexible the seismic response reduces as we move along this line because it's really very difficult to shake or to make make sure that a structure responds at a very long period under seismic actions um, I'll definitely create another video where I explain how flexible structures do not respond that quickly to seismic actions as compared to a shorter structures. But this is the size earthquake response spectrum. And if you want to understand this further, you can definitely visit my blog, Structural Madness, to, to get more information about modal analysis and response spectrum analysis and what is just basic dynamics of structures, to be honest. Um, along with that, I have plotted a wind spectrum. So, as the structure is stiffer, as we just saw, it doesn't respond that easily to wind just because it's short, so the force magnitude is small, and because the surface area is small, and along with that, it's also significantly stiffer. So, it just doesn't generate that much wind response. But as you go taller, wind response increases, and then it drops down. So. What just happened over here? For if, if you want to design a tall building, then you have to design it in such a way that it's resisting wind forces. While if you are designing a short building, then it's generally earthquake governed and wind you can literally ignore at times. Not always. Keep that in mind. Um, so in a tall building, we have to do so many things like provide supplemental damping to to stabilize the system, to reduce the wind oscillations, because let's say if you are living on 100th floor of a building and suddenly a tornado or a violent windstorm comes into, into that region, then what, what will happen? You'll start puking in your apartment because you'll start feeling dizzy and you'll feel all the accelerations of the building, which is not good. It's not an ideal scenario to live in. So generally in such tall, very flexible buildings, people just provide dampers at the top um, they are also known as tuned mass tempers. Why tuned mass? Because the mass is pr selected in some proportion of the building weight itself and the frequency of the damper is close to the primary period of the building so it can oppose at the exact same rate as the building oscillates. So literally reducing the building wind forces to kind of zero and its response to zero in a way. Not exactly, but that's, that's what we try to achieve. Um, so that was about like a wind spectrum versus earthquake spectrum. Now, I'd like to end the blog, blog over here. It's already been 10 minutes. I don't want to drag it further, but 
this was the very very first blog series from structural madness where i'm trying to do some experimental studies and demonstrate the idea of how structure actually behaves because as nigel priestley said that understanding the behavior of structure is more important to improve the fundamentals of design and this is this first ever video log was dedicated to him and i will try to explore more about this vlogs and try to post it more frequently but we'll definitely discuss further um thank you for watching this do comment do recommend it to friends and do share it if you like it i'd like to do this more often as i said and thank you and have a good night